My friend Brian has this new pergola beside his pool. Got a pile of dirt here off camera. We've got Johnny, Johnny X actually. And we're also going to plant these arborvitaes. We're going to use a new toy for that. Vinny's here joining us for today to get some of this final grading here. This is going to be a fun one to me. Simple and yet it's going to use a lot of tools. Let's get started. I'm going to start here by moving just some bigger bucketfuls of dirt here and then we'll begin to think of how we're going to do the detail. He wants it basically right up like three or four inches below the edge of that concrete for the final grade. He wants it to uh, grade off pretty quickly here because we want the water to run out here pretty much toward that wellhead, maybe a little this side of that wellhead. Been a lot of rain here recently, so this dirt pile is it's pretty wet. It's not as easy to work with as it would have been drier, but this is not going to be the final surface. This is going to be, um, like say, three or four inches below the surface. I think he's going to put some rock here on top of it. And then, of course, the arborvitaes we're going to plant in it today. Been a good while since we've used Johnny or Johnny X, either one, in the project. I apologize for that. I try to try to bring some variety and, and keep using them. I know people get frustrated when I don't use the, the one series as often as they think I should. But I tell you, in the pond project, it would have been pretty difficult to get the one series in there and made it productive. And I get enough comments from people saying, oh, the wrong tool for the job, the wrong tool for the job. I think if I got both of our one series in there, people would blow a gasket. Pretty good looking soil here. It's um, it's a clay. It's not really a topsoil for this area. <coughs> There's a lot of places that would consider this better than their topsoil, but hey, we're soil snobs in this area. I don't know if uh, you'll be able to see it, but the distance is absolutely stunning. Brian says this is the second highest point in the county. This is a perfect job for a one series, a subcompact tractor. We can work right around that wellhead without worry of breaking it. It's a job that you could do with a shovel. But I don't know about you, as I've said all along, I'm allergic to a shovel. And I think a lot of people that get these tractors, that's the situation. You're, you, you get them so that you don't have to use a hand shovel anymore. Yeah, there's so much of me wants to get a small tractor, and then it's like, for me, how often would I use it? Now, obviously, we can't cover up the wellhead here, but we are going to fill a little bit <coughs> so we get the dirt up closer to the surface here, and the wellhead won't stick out quite as far. I know of hindsight, if I'd have gotten one when we moved in, I would have used it a lot. Now, as a reminder, Johnny X is not a stock 1025R. We've got, let's see, the, the obvious is it's got the turbocharger and the improved hydraulic pump. I actually think that is uh, probably one of the things you would notice the most with this machine. It also has uh, larger loader cylinders, larger diameter boom cylinders, so we can lift more. All of these are from Hydros Plus. Hydrosplus.com, use code TTWT. Our new toys from Hydros Plus too. You gotta wait to see that. Get my loader low here and go up this pile. Now usually when I'm loading from a pile here, I go all the way to the ground level to start the load. In this case, I think I may want to leave some of this pile right here, so I'm starting a little higher. We'll probably end up leaving a little bit of that pile just to help finish that grade here, this little bit of this corner, 
So I no use going all the way to the original grade to pick it up. I use those larger tractors and I really do enjoy using them, but then I get back on Johnny and I forget just how much fun I have with Johnny. It's hard to beat the one series for fun. I mean, it'll eventually take more dirt, but I kind of wanted to get a look to, yeah. to see if you thought that was the look you were looking for. Yeah, just kind of slope, yeah, it's sloping down. I mean, if we can come out around there. So you want an, an, another bucket wide maybe around here, yeah. right there. And then maybe a little wider out here, yeah. This yeah, is it could slope out gradually. Okay, in, just, we'll just that's, use that's, all the dirt. And then up there, I think we're probably a little too steep in an area too there. Yeah, because eventually some of that at the top is going to come out when I dig out for the stone. Well, I think we're doing good. I think we're going to have enough dirt, but I don't think crazy too much. Yeah. Really, from what I'm seeing. This is one of my favorite parts of the tooth bar, is spreading it backwards like this. People say, well, you can't back drag. Well, I, I understand what they're saying, but if you're actually just wanting to kind of go through the soil and, and work it a little bit, you can do that very nicely. This is a little bit too wet to show that perfectly what I'm saying, but. Trying to envision what you're going to do with Vinny. I thought if, if you took Vinny and back raked mm -hmm. it across there, then if it's a little high there, you can, you've got it to bring across. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit low here mm -hmm. on the back side. And a little pile there. And a little pile. In there. So, maybe not enough, but I suspect it'll compress a little when we get Vinny out there. Yeah. So maybe that's a maybe and that's I, a good thing to do before we get rid of that pile of dirt out there is to get Vinny up here and see what it looks like. Right. where he needs that swale. It won't take much. There's more of a slope than what you think. Yeah, I believe that. Now, one thing I will say is once grass grows in it, it you know, so we kind of have to exaggerate yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to hydraulically control the, the, the depth here makes it a lot easier to dig something like this than the old one that had to crank on the top. Got plenty of slope. For your swale, so now it's just a question of where you want the dirt. I think if you just bring this around and just kind of level it out into here. Okay. I'm going to do that with Vinny. Folks, if you're looking to get into this business, it's pretty hard to find a tool that'll impress the customer more than Vinny and the Power Rake. I mean, it's just so easy to deal with. And yeah, they make Power Rakes for the skid steer loaders, of course, but you can't get out on the yard with them. You know, we can, I'll just show you, you know, the kind of thing. I can wheel, wheel right around, turn around on the yard without any risk. knock these dirt clods back into the mix. I mean, it's just amazing to work with this tool. Brian's laid out his arborvitae in. Now he's spraying around each hole. So 
people know where to dig a hole. Top of the dirt's about 10 inches. Let's go ahead and put it in there and see what we think. Wow. That's what I was afraid. Mm. Push her on down. Big hammer. Yeah, I think it'll go. Your big foot. Wait, do you want it down further? I think I, I do. I think we need to be just... We'll go a little deeper with the other one. You okay, do you, I don't know if the hole needed to be deeper, if it needed to be wallered out. I think waller out a little bit. Waller it out a little bit. That's a technical term there. Yeah, waller. Yeah. Well, let's waller this. Because this one may have, of course, when you water it, it'll all fill in under yeah. it, but it may have a little gap under it. Let's try the next one. A little practice. Okay. In addition to having the post hole auger, the auger plus from hydrosplus.com, I've got Kevin's fancy little switch, which will make the third function run continuously. This fits the standard John Deere third function handle. It's a direct replacement, so it adds, in addition to the up and down switch, it adds a continuous flow. Now I'm running at idle. It's supposed to require six gallons a minute. You want deeper or? Just Waller. Waller now. Um, it's supposed to require six gallons a minute, and I don't think I have six gallons a minute at idle. Now, admittedly, these are easy. Do you think I need to be going a little bit deeper then? Because if you're going to have to do it on your own after I'm done, that's not. I'm just trying to figure out how deep we did go. Right. Okay, I want to measure that. And then your tent, your hole is 10. Yeah. So the only problem is that our hole's not big enough for our yeah. rig. I'll, I'll wallow more next time. You'll tell me what? You'll drive a tractor and I dig, I use a shovel? No. <laughs> if, if that's all the wider that is, what we can do is just dig the initial hole and then I'll... No, 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 I can do wider than that. Yeah. You don't give up on me yet. You'll figure out how much wallering needs to... Yeah, you just have to, it takes me a little practice, sorry. I'm not perfect the first time. No, that's all right. Now, I think it'll go in there now. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, that went in there, didn't it? So let me go, if you don't mind, let me go a little bit deeper, and then we'll leave loose dirt in the bottom, and I'll waller more. I still could go a little deeper, couldn't I? I think that's better. We'll get onto it about time we get done. <laughs> I haven't stomped yet, so if we want to pull out, we still can. I'm happy. You happy? I'm gonna stomp a little bit. Yeah, that one's better. 
It was big enough that time, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Was that too deep last time? I like to lose it, leave a little loose yeah, in the I bottom. Yeah, I like that. I think that'd be better. That's Waller. <laughs> Of course, optimally, we would have had a little bit larger auger, but given the tight turning radius of the 1025R and the loader mount approach here, we're able to make it work. The power head on this unit uses the standard hex shaft so that any auger can connect to it. This would allow us to buy or rent any auger that we would want. I suppose I should look into getting a 12 or 14 inch auger. Seems like that's what I need a lot of the time. I think a stock 2R or 3E deer would run this digger, but I'm not exactly sure. Worst case, you might have to get the upgraded Hydros Plus hydraulic pump for those tractors as well. Certainly a 3R or Grand El Kubota, you'd have no issues. Best one so far. It really fell right down in there. I'll try this on a stock 1025R sometime around the house just to see. It's, it says it's rated at six gallons per minute. And obviously a stock 1025R does not have that. It's much handier to use than a three point post hole digger. Uh, the, the biggest reason is it'll turn backwards, right? I can stop it here and I can run it backwards or forwards. Uh, this is the automatic switch that I talked about before. Now this attaches to any fork frame. So if you've already got a fork frame, that's, that's the best way to go with this thing. It's just, uh, so I, for instance, I have it on the Artillion fork frame. Kevin wants you to run it off to the side. And I can see why that improves your visibility a lot. The disadvantage for me is I'm afraid I won't be able to pick it up without, you know, I won't have sufficient rear ballast on the tractor. I can put a little bit of down pressure on with, with this approach. Not a whole lot because my front end's a little light, right? But it's probably more than I can put on with a three-point post hole digger. The biggest thing for me, again, is just the comfort level of knowing I can reverse it out of there. That means a lot. 
So basically, I would consider that I, I, if, if you're interested in this, you're just going to have to buy the Hydros Plus pump kit with it if you've got a 1025R. That's just going to be a, a just considered a prerequisite. And yeah, it's it's already a lot more pricey than a than a three point. I get it, but uh, it is much nicer. That saved me a lot of work. Yeah, I still worked you pretty hard. I gave you the wrong the wrong end of the stick, as we might say. Well, I leave that end up to the professionals. I think this looks pretty good. I think this is going to be nice. I don't know. These grow pretty fast, right? Yeah. Uh, top 12 feet on these. I'll probably keep them trimmed down now. Kind of get a hedge built up around. And as they grow, they'll grow outward a little bit. They don't grow outward a lot. Hopefully this breaks some of the wind that comes up through here. You're going to put rock in here. Yeah, I haven't quite figured that out. We'll think about it next spring, but. Uh, and then maybe some grass out there. Are you going to try to put any other foliage in here? Uh, no, I'll probably just mow around these, honestly. The second, the second batch, the second, second batch row. at least. Thank you to Kevin from Hydros Plus for providing the Auger Plus. Um, I really like this, and, and usually I don't have a very good attitude when I'm drilling post holes. You've noticed, you've been around me for a few post Cross holes. Cross the road, uh, we did this. This worked good. It was perfect for this size. We could have used a little bit bigger auger, but it's got a standard hex shaft. So any auger would work. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. We're soon getting to my favorite part of the project. Sitting down drinking some Pepsi. Diet Pepsi and cheeseburger. He seems a little hesitant. Sounds like a winner. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.